All right, what's good, y'all? So seeing the success of my last video and seeing how many people I helped, I decided to make this one. And I'm gonna be talking about how to widen your clavicles before it's too late, but not really. And yeah, it's actually possible. It's not some pseudoscience bullshit. You know, I'm gonna be using logic and facts to prove my statements. And coincidentally, the way to do it is also a golden trap exercise. But first, let's go through some theory. Wolf's Law by Surgeon Julius Sigma Wolf. Wolf's Law states that bones will adapt to the degree of mechanical loading. This means basically, if you put pressure on a bone, it's gonna adapt to it by fortifying itself. Similarly, if you put pressure that expands the bone, it's also gonna adapt itself to withstand that pressure. So it's similar to how muscle hypertrophy works. You're gonna be putting a load on a muscle. It's gonna adapt itself by increasing in strength. And it also explains the side effects of weightlifting or bone health. I'm pretty sure all of you motherfuckers have heard that lifting weight is super good for your bone health because it makes them stronger and denser. Well, it's true. And it's also practiced medically. There's a fuck ton of procedures that use Wolf's Law, so just ling lengthening surgery. I'm pretty sure you've seen those motherfuckers on TikTok. They're like five foot four, and then they spend, they go ahead and spend a hundred pounds on some surgery to get to six feet. And how does that work? Basically, they get this little device that implants into their into the leg bone. And what that device does, it applies pressure that stretches the bone, so it breaks the bone millimeter by millimeter until like a couple years later, they get to six feet and they're all happy and shit. And it's also used in orthodontics. You know, I personally had braces. And how does it work? You get a wire that applies constant pressure in the teeth and little by little, it remodels your face. And feet correction, I also had flat feet, for example, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you motherfuckers probably use foot insoles to fix like scoliosis, uh, any hip issues, knee issues. Now, how does it work? The same thing, it little by little remodels the bone by applying a physical load. So if people spend thousands on these type of procedures and there's a fuck ton of them, then it's, it's obviously not some bullshit pseudoscience. It works. So how can we apply it in the gym to wide on our clavicles? We do Reeves shrugs. Who's Steve Reeves? I know who Steve Reeves. He's an OG bodybuilder. And how does it work? Basically, you get a barbell. You know the little barbells in the gym? That, you know the normal ones? They're a bit smaller. And you put a plate, you put a plate, and then you shrugs like this. All right, you grab the page, and it's like a wide-ass grip shrug. So why does it work? It directly loads the clavicle. In the mechanism of doing that type of shock, you're gonna be using your arm bone, arm bone, clavicle, and as a muscle, your trap. Out of those three, the clavicle is the weakest thing. So what does that mean? You're gonna be directly loading the clavicle. And you can also apply progressive overload. So once you get to a certain weight where your clavicle is chilling, you can increase the weight, which is gonna force that clavicle to stretch even more. And also the clavicle is the last bone to fuse. So bones stop growing when their growth space closes. And the clavicle tends to be the last one. And it occurs around 21 or 23, 25. It varies by source, but in your 20s. So what does that mean? If you're, let's say, under 25, your clavicle is even more malleable. So you can get even more results of this type of exercise. And you can also do similar exercises like Reeves deadlift. Basically, it's the same shit. You just get a grab by the plates and you just do a deadlift instead of a shrug. The only main difference is that you're gonna be just doing a constant hold instead of like repetitions, but it works nevertheless. Now, what other aspects makes brief shrug super goaded? It protects the clavicle. The clavicle is the most broken bone in the entire body, all right? So whether you play fucking football, uh, basketball, golf or shit, if you even go on a walk like my grandma, you could fall and break your clavicle. It wouldn't break if you fortify it, all right? So it should be a super big interest to fortify the clavicle, which this exercise does. And it's also a great trap exercise. Funny enough, even though a trap movement is like vertical with a shoulder, the trap fiber is actually horizontal. So instead of pulling it, pulling your shoulder vertical, your body is actually pulling your shoulder inwards. So what does that mean? If you do an exercise where you're pulling in that range of motion, you're gonna be getting a crazy deep stretch. And we all know stretch is great for hypertrophy. Now, what are some tips for performing reef shrugs? So you wanna use the smaller Olympic bar, like I mentioned before. If you use the normal uh, barbell, it's gonna be way too, grab, too wide to grip. So unless you're like six foot seven, don't use that shit. Straps, eventually you're gonna get strong. So you wanna use straps cause you're gonna be grabbing the plates. So you really need to fucking use straps. Next up, separate the plates. So in order to use straps in the first place, you know, you need a little wiggle room. So for example, what I do is when I load my barbell, I first put my 45 pound plate, 45 pound plate, then I put two little 10 pound plates and then my other 45 pound plate so that I have, to, I have a little space where I can loop around my strap. And this is the most important tip. Be careful, especially if you've trained traps in the, in the past, right? The clavicle starts off super weak bone. And if you put way too much load, you're going to fucking and no more clavicle for you. All right. So 
please be careful. Start with low weight and go little by little. And you're going to feel crazy sore the next day on your clavicle. And that's a sign that it's, you know, fortifying and growing. And eventually, you know, your chops gonna, your clavicle is going to get strong. And also, control the rep. Due to the widened grip, like, look at this range of motion. It's like non-existent. Compared to like a normal barbell shrug when I'm putting my hands over here, this is a whole range of, a whole rep compared to this. So, you know, it's a super, super small range of motion. So what you want to do is just control the rep to have around three seconds of time and attention because otherwise it's going to be pretty useless. And worst case scenario, let's say I'm completely wrong somehow. Let's say that the clavicles don't grow for some reason, even though they do. But in the worst case scenario, let's say I'm completely wrong. You will still increase the bone density in your clavicles, which is super important because like I mentioned before, the clavicle is the most commonly broken bone in the entire body. So especially, especially if you do sports, Please do, do this exercise because I promise you, the, you're going to be feeling crazy sore in your clavicles and shit like, I could take a punch and I'll be fine, bro. So please just do this exercise to at least fortify your clavicles.